Welcome to Family of Christ. My name is Pastor Megan, and on behalf of our community here at Family of Christ, I welcome you to this morning's service. Here at Family of Christ, we are a grace-filled family, sharing the gospel through faith, love, and compassion. Everybody is somebody here, and all are welcome. Today we begin our journey into the Easter season, where we explore the theme, Resurrection Is. Easter, after all, isn't just a one-time event, but it's about becoming something new, claiming our identity in the risen Christ, and preparing for our ministries as the body of Christ. Living in the resurrection, we become renewed people, discover our true gifts, connect with our God-given passions, live in community, and make an impact in the world. Deep down, this is exactly who we are called to be as both the children of God and as a community of faith. Joining in a timeless community of Easter people, we will walk through both the gospel and the Psalms to wade into the resurrection mystery. resurrection with humility we confess our sins before God and one another I invite you to take a moment to, to just reflect on your life and to lift up those struggles and sins that you have to God risen Lord we long to live in the power of your resurrection promises but we are slow to let go of all that keeps us in the grip of death Anger, regret, envy, stubbornness, self-righteousness, exclusion, fear, despair. Forgive us. Work in our hearts and show us the joy which comes in believing your word of life. Amen. People of God, hear the good news. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And with him so are we. Receive and trust that in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. 
Amen. also with you. Let us pray. Resurrected Lord, your disciples were joyful when you returned to them that Easter day. May we who have not seen, heard, and felt as they have also know that same joy through the power of your spirit. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Happy Easter. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, I know. At least Easter was last week. I made sure, uh, sure I went out on Monday and got the 50% off my favorite Easter candy since it was over and Target was clearing them out. I have enough peeps to last me all summer. But, but actually in the church, Easter is 50 days uh, of a season that we, well, we call Easter. And some would say that Easter is every Sunday because we celebrate God's love that is greater than anything. But sometimes that's hard or tricky to see because like the women at the tomb or, or those first, first disciples, they didn't see Jesus for a while. Oh, I have a question for you here. Look at these two lines, right? Which one of them is longer? The top one or the bottom one? You sure? <laughs> Some of you know this, but it looks like the top one is though, right? But actually, if we draw a line between the two of them, we realize that they're the same length. Huh. Wow. Sometimes th things look different than they actually are. And this is true with God sometimes. Some days when we're feeling loved or cared for, we have a great day with our family and friends, and we see how beautiful the world is around us. It's easy to say, thank you, God, for everything. But other days, it's not so easy. Like when we're scared or we're sad or we've had a hard time of things for a while. Then we wonder if God is really there. But Easter reminds us that yes, God is always with us. In fact, nothing, not even death itself, can take away God's love and grace and hope for us. That's an important thing to remember. That's something we need to hear again and again. Well, let's pray. We'll do a repeat prayer. All you have to do is repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your love and help us to remember that you are always with us. Amen. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 133. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. The gospel for this morning is from John 20, 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, 
and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but, del but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which were not written in, the, in this book. But these were written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father and Mother, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that you all had a very happy, joy-filled, and rejuvenating Easter with your family this year. My family got to celebrate Easter all together for the first time in three years, and so you can imagine that we dove right back into some of our favorite traditions. It started out with my sister and I hunting for my Easter baskets, and no, you are not too old to get an Easter basket. Of course, mine was hidden in the bathtub, as it usually is. And then I popped over to my neighbor's house for an egg hunt. And I may or may not have dove off of the steps of the deck in order to get to an egg first. But in my defense, that egg had an entire dollar in it. And then it came time for our family meal. We sat down and we were surrounded by these dishes of ham, and these jello dishes that we judiciously call salads. And then came the awkward part, the awkward silence before the prayer. Now, we and my family are pretty traditional Lutherans. You know, the, the sit at the very back of the pew and the mumble the hymns and the evade the coffee hour at all costs kind of people. So you can imagine that our family prayer before the meal at Easter and Christmas usually falls to kind of quiet and, you know, okay, who's going to start it kind of a thing. My family always joked once I said that I wanted to become a pastor that I should start the meal with some kind of a, a devotional or a little Bible lesson, but their words ask, but their eyes plead at me to just help us get this over with. And so, you know, we eventually all bowed our heads and did the, come Lord Jesus, be our guest and let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen and then dove right back into the food. <laughs> I don't think my family's experience is all that uncommon. I mean, there is a reason why that most churches have extra services on big holidays like Christmas and Easter. Christians oftentimes come to church on those holidays to more or less check the religion box off of their holiday to-do list, to hear somebody else share the Easter message, so that they can get back to the little fun things like egg hunts and jello salads. But I mean, why is that? Why is it that so many of us who have grown up in church, who have gone through Sunday school and confirmation and Bible camp, why is faith something that is so hard to talk about, especially with the people who are closest to us? Even when we're celebrating something so miraculous and joyous as the resurrection of Christ, why can't we talk about it? No doubt there are many legitimate ways to answer this question, but I can't help but wonder if the idea of life after death is still something that is too bizarre, too supernatural, too amazing for us to wrap our heads around. 
Remember last week when we read about the women who went to Jesus' tomb and discovered that Christ had risen? The angel instructed them at that moment to go and tell Jesus' dearest and closest friends the good news and all that they had seen and learned. But it says that the women ran away terrified. So my friends, could we still be running from the resurrection? If we fast forward a little bit in the gospel story, we learn that Jesus had shown himself to Mary Magdalene and that she eventually went and told the disciples all she had witnessed. But then what did they do? They went and locked themselves away, hiding from the truth of the resurrection. My friends, are we still hiding from the resurrection? And then we have Thomas, who did not hear Mary's testimony or see the risen Christ for himself. Instead, Thomas vowed to doubt the truth of the resurrection until he could touch Jesus' wounds for himself. My friends, are we still doubting the resurrection? If you personally answered yes to any of these questions, you're not alone. You are in the same company as Jesus' closest and first followers, in the same company as me, and in the same company as countless Christians before us. We are all united as an Easter people, united in our fear and our doubt, in our inability to comprehend something as glorious as the resurrection. And so we are also united in our need for that gift of faith, the gift of faith that the Holy Spirit can bring us, which God has promised us. We need the Spirit to help us encounter the risen Christ so that we can hear in our hearts Christ's assurance, peace be with you. And finally, we need the gift of the Holy Spirit to claim our identities in the risen Lord, to live as the body of Christ in the world. Unfortunately, there are an infinite number of ways that the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, meeting us where we are and guiding us as we live as children of God. Two of the most prominent ways that the Holy Spirit meets us are through word and community. We may not be able to touch Logos, the word of God who is Christ Jesus, but we can touch and experience God's word as scripture, as storytelling of the epic biblical narrative of God and salvation and life. These ancient stories come to us and community where we tell the biblical narrative in our own words, from our own points of view. When we share God's narrative of resurrection as it continues with us, in us, and through us. This kind of sharing and storytelling is what our psalm talks about for today, Psalm 133. The psalm is titled The Song of Ascents, and it was likely sung by pilgrims as they were going to the temple in Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. So Psalm 133 is a celebration of storytelling and of community, of coming together to share stories of faith, past and present, of passing those stories down from generation to generation. So my challenge for you this Easter season, as we wrestle with questions about what resurrection is and what it means and how it continues with us, is to reclaim the practice of storytelling of sharing stories of faith, past and present, with one another. Perhaps this starts with personalizing our dinner prayers, or with reading our Bibles as families, or even our Spark Story Bibles. Or perhaps it starts with asking for prayer requests in those moments when we would rather hide in fear, locking out the world. Or perhaps it starts with raising the honest question among trusted friends where are you at in your faith journey? Recognizing, of course, that we are all united in our doubt and in our struggle to believe. However you choose to pursue this challenge and step forward on this journey, encountering Christ as the Holy Spirit, as community with one another, know that you join a timeless community of Easter people wading into the resurrection mystery.
Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. <laughs> I invite you to share that peace of God with those around you today or those you may know. Make a call today or send a text and share the peace of God that, that God has given you and you need to hear. Now, this is also our time of offering, and I want to thank you so much for your continued generosity for the ministries of the family of Christ. We make a huge impact in and around the world that God has given us, and your support has been crucial in this mission. So thank you. You know, this week we're looking at one of, or, or this month I should say, we're looking at one of our biggest mission partners, and that's Luther Park Bible Camp in Danbury, Wisconsin. Luther Park has been crucial in the faith formation of our youth and young adults and continues to provide opportunities for families to come together in faith-filled ways. This summer they will again open for in-person camp with strict COVID guidelines. And Family of Christ will offer $150 scholarships for any of our youth going to camp. So sign up your young one for camp today. They have also expanded their camping ministries, family camping ministries, so the families can come together on weekends and go and spend some time together just being in a place that is affordable and faith-filled that includes things like uh, arts and crafts and meals and water activities, even bonfires. So please consider an extra donation this month to this important partner in ministry that shares the love, the grace, and the hope of Christ. Thank you for your support. Prayers of the Church. We pray for the church, the world, and all of those in need. Along with Thomas, we may find it difficult to perceive your present among, presence among us, O Lord. Show us all the ways that we can see, hear, and experience you in the world and the people around us, living God. Hear our prayer. If we say we have fellowship with you while still waking in darkness, then we are not being honest. 
Shine a light upon all that we foster within ourselves, which doesn't reflect your love and your vision for this world. And bring us to a renewed relationship with you and with others. Living God, hear our prayer. In the beauty of creation, we see you, Lord, and in the eyes of our sisters and our brothers. Strengthen our resolve to protect and nurture all that you have made and treasure all with whom we share this planet. Living God, hear our prayer. Comfort all who struggle with doubt or uncertainty and those for whom each day feels like a trial. Assume them of your presence and ease their troubled minds. We pray this day whose needs we know, living God, hear our prayer. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. We give thanks for all the saints whose lives and witness made it possible for us to come to you, living God. Hear our prayer. Hear these prayers we offer and use us to bring about the answers. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. My friends, resurrection is a mystery. A mystery that marks our identity as children of God and a mystery that we explore together. Resurrection continues in, with, and through us. And that's something to wrestle with through storytelling and community. And so however you choose to take this challenge to wrestle with the meaning of resurrection in your own life, with your own friends and your family and your community here at Family of Christ, go forth with this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the face of the Lord shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
hands display your likeness.